Broadcasting from the Golden Spread of Texas, this is The Fred Hughes Show. With each episode, we introduce to you an inspiring person or message to help you grow and unlock your potential in life. I'm Fred Hughes, professional photographer, pastor, teacher, author, and your show host. Thank you for joining us and welcome to this episode brought to you by the Faithful Partners of Decision Ministry. Well, hello and welcome to the Fred Hughes Show. My name is Stephen Tao and I'll be setting in for Fred Hughes tonight. Uh, rest assured, Fred is here with us as always. He's taking care of all the technical side of things and making sure we look and sound good. So uh, we're just so happy you could join us here tonight. And and we know that so many of you uh, all across the world are tuning in and there's so many ways that you can tune into this show. And we want to encourage you. Uh, there's YouTube. If, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, go ahead and like uh, that page there. Subscribe to The Fred Hughes Show. Uh, if you're watching uh, by Facebook Live, we love to get the feedback and comments, uh, as long as they're positive, please. Uh, but <laughs> either way, we really love just connecting with the body of Christ. And this is such a great way uh, to just bring forth God's Word in ministry. You know, The Fred Hughes Show is a great place where we see testimonies. Uh, we hear about different ministries and different teachings. So, so glad you guys could be with us here tonight. Um, part of the reason I'm uh, hosting tonight is some very close friends of mine and my wife's uh, are here, and I'm going to introduce them in a minute. Uh, but we're real excited about this young couple that's with us here tonight and and what God's doing in them and, and through their ministry. So we're going to talk about that. I uh, do want to give a very quick plug here, and you can see on the screen, uh, coming on Friday, the 24th, February 24th, uh, at 6.30 p.m., uh, Glory Now. It's from Decision Ministries, which is the ministry that actually is uh, the covering for the Fred Hughes Show. But it's a time of ministry, everything from teaching, moving in the gifts, the prophetic. Uh, the Holy Spirit just has a full reign to move. There's going to be fantastic worship. And let me also say, Partly because this young couple, they also lead worship. So uh, we'll hear more yeah. about that later as well. So anyhow, it's going to be a great time. Uh, these guys have been doing this for a while. So there's other uh, churches and believers from all over that come. So we want to encourage you again, uh, Friday the 24th, uh, 630. And it's at Pray Amarillo at 4000 Southwest 50th Street. Um, and you can go to decision one, that's decision, the number one dot org. And you can find out more about that event there. So anyhow, come join us Friday, February 24th. So with that being said, let's get into tonight. I want to introduce our guest again, good friends of ours, Justin and Alejandra Garcia. Welcome guys. Yay, hey, thanks. Happy to be here. Yeah, we appreciate the invite. <clears throat> well, we're blessed to have you guys. Want to just kind of get a feel for what's happening in your ministry. You guys, we know you guys have a podcast. I want to hear about that. But first off, uh, just tell us a little bit about yourselves, uh, your family, kids. Give us that whole dynamic there. Yeah, so uh, I'm Justin Alejandra, my wife. We, uh, we've been married for going on 11 years now, and uh, we've got four beautiful children. You can see them there in the screen. And uh, we uh, originally from the Amarillo area, you know, we've done ministry uh, in and out in different capacities for the last 10 years. And so it's taken us to some other beautiful places like Wichita Falls and, and uh, yeah, other churches. And so, um, yeah, that's a, we've, uh, we, we love ministry. We love people, love marriages, families. Um, it's just, it's kind of all there together. So yeah, uh, yeah, it's just a little bit about us. That's good. That's good. Well, and I'll tell you too, uh, my wife and I, we are in a small group with these guys, so we're getting to know them more on this level of ministry. And I just love how real you guys are, transparent. That really comes out in your ministry. So speaking of your ministry, let's talk about this. Yeah. You guys have a podcast. What's the name of it? It's called We Are Better we're Together. Better together. We're yeah. supposed to say that together. Yeah. <laughs> we, we are, are better, better together. together. That's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah. Well, I've been listening to y'all's podcast. By the way, really love how you guys have the coolest little intro song and and that what they just did right there. They've got it down. It's it's perfect. Uh, oh, it's so good. Uh, really is, guys. Very relatable. We talked about that. Um, but tell me, how did you come to this name? We are better together. What's is there anything behind that? 
Yes. Yeah. Yes, go there ahead. is. Go ahead. I'll jump in <clears throat> if I need to. <laughs> yeah. So we, uh, uh, I think it was maybe it's been about seven or eight years, I think. Yes. Um, I was we, pregnant with our son and uh-huh. he um, is seven and a half now. So yeah. yeah. So we were, we were part of a church of a ministry called Trinity Fellowship and they used to do this, uh, um, this uh, event, it was like a prophetic event, really, that we would call mm-hmm. presbytery, yeah. and they would invite, um, you know, pastors or the presbyters, if you will, uh, to come and to give words to families and, and to couples about what God's saying and of the future and, you know, kind of what's what God has mm-hmm. kind of in store, you know, and what, what the calling is he's placed on their life. And so Alejandra and I were lucky to go through that, and uh, there was one thing, uh, it was actually Pastor Brady Boyd, who... Uh, was one of the presbyters. He was speaking yeah. over us and just uh, uh, kind of sharing his what the Lord was putting on his heart for us. And uh, marriage was a really big thing. And it was, uh, you know, he even said it in the terms of it was a marriage calling. And it's it's very true because Alejandra and I, I mean, we love marriage. We love married people. <laughs> um, marriage itself, the idea, the institution, God's way of doing relationship here, I mean, it's just fascinating. And we love talking about it, sharing about it with folks. But he kept he kept um, saying a specific phrase, <laughs> you know, and he and he kept yeah. saying that you're better together, and that was part of the the word as well. And he said, uh, "You guys are gonna you guys are gonna do it together. Not that one of you's in the game and one of you's not. You're <clears throat> both gonna be in it, calling other couples into the game. And um, if you want to hear a little bit more in depth, or even that a uh, that little clip specifically, it's on the first you know episode of our podcast where we shared that. But uh, that's kind of where it all came from. And that we kind idea. of we kind of argued about it a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> like, See, this is where they get real, right? Yeah, this is start. it. Yeah. I mean, we um, we did because so what's interesting is like we have a pillow on our couch that says "Better Together." Better Together. Okay. Um, yeah, see. I think we had even like googled other things like just trying to come up with like inspiration and i remember i remember saying to you babe like oh maybe you know better together just sounds kind of cheesy like it sounds kind of corny and um and and he See was like I yeah no, <laughs> and i was like i don't know let's just like let's just kind of sit on it and then what we talked about was you know what part of the dream and the vision Mm -hmm. for doing this podcast and wanting to pour into married couples and to walk alongside married couples was because of the words that we had received Mm. in in times past. And so we've, we've listened to our presbytery um, many, many times over the years that we've been married and times Mm -hmm. that we've struggled. It's, it's promises that we go back to. And um, I remember saying, why don't we listen to the presbytery one more time? with intention yeah. and we listen and and see what holy spirit drops in our hearts as we're listening and it was um pastor brady boyd and he said the phrase better together like six times <laughs> six or seven times wow and i just remember like looking at him and i'm like i can't really argue with you anymore <laughs> it's cheesy but hey some people like cheesy and it gets the message across you know and um and so it's been really really fun even just to see that phrase you know the cheesiness of it even the lord using that and really that being genuinely our heart behind it of just we are better together let's yeah really all be better together and just walk in that truth. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's so good. You know, it's interesting. My son, he works for an engineering firm and their slogan is along those lines, it's working together. And yeah. that word actually in this culture is something that is, it's kind of a buzzword right now. So unknowingly yeah. cheesy, <laughs> however you got there, uh, it definitely fits right now. Okay. Let's talk for a moment. You guys are doing a marriage podcast. I want to talk about that yeah. and all that entails, but let's back up. Okay. Let's talk about the road that got you here. And I know y'all are good with this because y'all are a wide open book. Yeah. You're leading a, a <laughs> podcast, man. I've heard it. it's fantastic. Tell me about the road that got you here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so long story short, you know. I don't um, like that. Long story short. Yeah. But, but you can do the long uh, yeah. story short. <laughs> For the sake I'll, of time, yeah. long story short. Um, I'll fill in the details yeah, where they need to will. go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's funny because Alejandra and I, even before we met each other, we had you know, we would both say we were very uh, uh, passionate about the Lord, mm-hmm. you know, had a calling on our life uh, to pursue him and and even particularly in the area of ministry um, mm-hmm. in building his church. Um, we uh, we've always been drawn to that. And so when we met, 
I remember um, that was one of the main things that I was looking for in a wife. Mm-hmm. But somebody who valued yeah. the ministry felt like it was part of their calling mm-hmm. because ministry is not for the faint of heart, yeah. you know. And yeah. so, uh, you know, and it was I loved it because it all culminated with beauty and personality and ministry <laughs> and it all was all together. And so we got, you know, we, we fell in love. We got married. Um, we had our first daughter, you know, about a year and a half into it. And mm-hmm. and things were going pretty decent. You know, we started uh, kind of rising the ranks of ministry, if you will. And then we made a major move uh, in our life, um, taking another ministry position with the church we were in, uh, in Wichita Falls. And uh, that's where really the rubber kind of met the road, mm-hmm. if you will. Yeah. Um, I have, you know, I've moved and I've lived in different places and all while being single, it was all Hondra's really her first time leaving home and was very and, uh, young, very, yeah. very young. And you know, when you make a move us. like this, finding a support system, yeah. I mean, we're uh, not to say or, you know, toot our horn or anything, but we're very connected in Amarillo, yeah. very connected, especially in, in the church circles we ran in and we, you know, yeah. known and done a lot of things with a lot of people yeah. that built a lot of relationships. So when we moved, I mean, we were literally leaving behind <clears throat> a support system. And how many and, kids uh, do you have, by the way? We had you're... two at that okay. point. So yeah. two kids. Two of the yes. four. Yeah, no two of the four. support system. Let's no keep that in mind. Well, yeah, we it's, had this, it's exactly like, it. Yeah. It was like we were in, and we, we've said this before, but it was like we were in this bubble mm, of right. kind of protection of, you know, having that system, having our families, our families who lived in, in Amarillo, yeah. um, you know, all the things that kind of made it really easy to be kind of arrogant mm-hmm. i'm going to use the word of just being like oh we got this like yeah. Yeah. we're good <laughs> we you know we've been we, at that point we had been married 4 years mm-hmm. um and so there was and, and i think the lord really re- revealed that to us but just some of that arrogance of we kind of mm-hmm. our marriage um our marriage kind of took a back seat to mm-hmm. all the other things that were really calling our attention so so we we really hit a crisis point in our marriage you know yeah. within the first year that we were there yeah. and um and honestly, Stephen, man, I was living my dream. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I was, we were running and gunning and building the kingdom. And what more could I ask for? <laughs> and, uh, you know, all the while, you know, my wife was having struggles of her mm-hmm. own as b- building a church, as some of you know, is difficult. And that was, you know, hard in and of itself. It came with challenges. But our marriage really took a back seat and it, it hurt us. Yeah. Yes, and it, uh, it, it came to a culmination type point where we really looked at each other and we were faced with a decision. Mm-hmm. Um, either we can get help and mm-hmm. be and prioritize our marriage and uh, love one another the way God has called us to, mm-hmm. um, uh, or we could kind of just glaze over this yeah. and just develop this more as a pattern. Mm for our marriage until we couldn't take it anymore. Does that make sense? Yeah. And uh, we decided to get help because that's how miserable we were. And uh, (laughs) uh, luckily our church leadership at the time was very loving and endearing uh, and they They helped us. us. Uh, They, uh, they sent us to, uh, uh, I don't know if you know, but the hideaway experience, Mm -hmm. Um, we did the hideaway experience and it really uh, revolutionized the way we thought about, uh, personally ourselves yeah. and dealing with some inner things within each of us separately and then together. Yeah. And uh, it changed our lives. And it, it was uh, the moment that marked yeah. the rest of mm-hmm. our, our marriage. I mean, it was mm-hmm. that moment of, you know, I mean, it was, that was even the scripture, you know, in Joshua, like these stones, what do these stones represent? That was that moment for us mm-hmm. of, yeah. we built the altar there and said, <clears throat> Lord, you did this. Yeah. Here and and since then, it has not been easy. Yeah, you're awesome. I love you, but I don't like you sometimes. <laughs> um, but it hasn't been easy. But I can say, and with confidence, again, not arrogance, but confidence yeah. in the Lord and what He's done. It's like we have our dream marriage. Yeah, I mean, from that moment, genuinely, the choice that we made of I don't care what anybody else thinks. I don't care, yeah. you know, what was going to be said about us or thought about us or any of that. Like. From this moment forward, I'm going to choose to to do this the way the Lord has asked us to. Yeah. And so a lot of reprioritizing in that season. Um, <laughs> we had two young, young kids. And so oh, it was wow. like, that's hard because, yeah. you know, those things are pulling at you. Ministry is pulling at us. Um, but we we said, no, 
this is first, you know, it's, yeah. it's our relationship with Jesus and then this. Yeah. And, um, and it did, it changed everything. It changed our marriage, it changed our home. The culture of our home was completely changed for the better. Yeah. Um, it changed just our relationships with others, the way that we viewed even the world, the way that we ministered to others. Um, so it was just an incredible, it was hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's been, it was an incredible journey mm-hmm. now looking back saying, wow, look what the Lord has done, but it was hard. And, but we chose to put in the work. Yeah, so. yeah. That's good. You know, ministry is something that we all know how important ministry is and you do it as unto the Lord. And yet, and I've seen this firsthand too, I have a lot of family in ministry, and we oftentimes, the enemy uses guilt yeah. to really drive us to do more ministry and then yeah. sacrifice our marriage. Yep. So, you know, it's it's really it's really something that you see a lot, and it's great that you guys, you know, the Lord brought you to point to recognize yeah. that. I want to point out, you said something, I was having my dream, building yes. the kingdom, and, and, and that's very common. But think about how God redeemed that because we're better together. That's yeah. right. Because the original attraction you guys had mm-hmm. was that you do ministry together. Now, full circle. Yeah. And by the way, you guys bear the fruit of this because, again, you're very real, but there's real good fruit in your marriage. And mm-hmm. it really speaks to everyone around you and the ministry that you guys have started here. So mm-hmm. with that, let's talk, talk about some topics that you guys, you guys, they, yeah. they've got stuff. I, I've never heard of emotional <laughs> spaghetti. Yeah. Uh, that's evidently a thing. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it's everything from covenant, emotional spaghetti. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff. Yeah. But pick a topic that you guys have, have really talked about that you really enjoyed or you felt it was really prevalent right now uh, for marriages. Um, for me, I lo- you mentioned, oh, you know, there's a podcast episode we did. It was mm-hmm. called, uh, 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 what was it? Uh, about the emotional spaghetti. Um, yeah. Man, I forgot. Was what it was ent- entangling? Yes, untangling. untangling. So honesty. that's it. Honesty and emotional and spaghetti. That's what it was. That's so good. That's good. The reason why we talked about it because, and I think this is a real practical thing with marriages just in general, but um, there was an untying that Alejandra and I had to learn to do. Mm. And that untying was of our emotions. Mm. Um, I mean, you know, Stephen, how many times do we hear guys say that, well, you know what? I just, happy wife, happy life. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, my challenge, gentlemen, to that is to what extent? Mm. Uh, because you can only go so far with that mentality yeah. before you're frustrated, you know, obviously, yeah. because uh, your wife now just will probably run all over you. Mm-hmm. But number two, your wife's frustrated because now it's come to a place where you, man of God, can no longer rise and lead your home. And so there was an, uh, there was a tangling of emotions that Alejandra and I were dealing with yeah. that, mm-hmm. you know, frankly, there were things that I would get upset about or, uh, you know, that would bother me, but I didn't want to tell them to her yeah. because I didn't want to deal with what was going to happen, you know, with that. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, yeah. for me, I had to learn to be honest with my wife. Uh, yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. It's, it's that, yeah. There oh, you sorry. go. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, it, uh, there was an honesty that I had to have with my wife, not that I was lying, but yeah. that I was keeping from her things yeah. that bothered me. And, and it really kept us from, from, um, clicking together or being close together because then my idea was, well, now she becomes public enemy number one. And how can I relate to this woman who keeps offending me? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So there was an, there was an untying of emotions, untangling of emotions that I needed to own what was mine. She had to own what was hers. Yeah. And um, there was an honesty that had to be built between us because truthfully, your marriage uh, can only be enriched into the degree that there's honesty between the two of you. That's good. That's and good, so babe. Um, that's good. <laughs> and that's, Man. that's what I, that's, that's what good. I had to learn. Right. It's real good. I yeah. couldn't, I couldn't just keep stuff in the trash can down thinking the trash was going to go away. At some point, it's gonna explode. Yeah, and so uh, that's probably been one of the one of the topics that I really love discussing. And on, the, and on the flip side of that, just to add to what you were saying, babe, mm-hmm. uh, it was his problem was being honest and how how to bring that up to me. Mine was I was just so honest all oh, the yeah. time. She had no problem <laughs> telling no me what problem was going on. <laughs> telling him what was going on. And, but because of my personality, because I'm very outgoing and, and I feel safest with the people that I love, I had no problem confronting him and confronting him in a um, pretty harsh way mm-hmm. to where then I was doing damage because I'm not, I'm projecting what I'm feeling onto him instead of taking care of it. Yeah. here first and letting the Lord deal. Okay. What am I feeling? Why am I feeling that? Okay. Now 
I can bring that to my husband in a um, now productive way, wanting to move forward in this, not just griping about whatever he did to me that, no, 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 no. I mean, I just, yeah. I, I say this, I've said this before. It's like, just like a chihuahua dog. Just yep, 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 <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Like I'm great at that. I, I'm um, very small, but I feel like I'm like a Rottweiler, you know? Yeah. Like, and so. Um, Would you agree with that, Justin? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. So okay. yeah, but as far as that kind of untangling, that was on his side, it was that of needing to be more honest and say what he was feeling. Mine was, hey girl, <clears throat> check what you're feeling. Yeah. Let the Lord deal with it first and then bring that bring that to your husband um, and be and still say what you feel. But now it's from a totally different place, not from a place of pain. Yeah, that's good. And and don't you guys think, do you feel that so many couples, you know, my wife and I were going on 30 years of marriage and yeah, yes, awesome. by God's grace, that's she right. is a that's, woman that's awesome. of faith and mercy or all those things. She's <laughs> endurance. That's what I'm looking for. You um, but you know, we've always talked about, we didn't want a marriage of just existence. We wanted a marriage that had life, yes. Absolutely. life, it, it'll cost you some, you yeah. know, it's a narrow road that leads to life and choosing that road. It's hard, but man, the benefit, it, you know, it pays off. And so it's neat to hear y'all's story because that's really played out, played out and where you've been and more importantly, where you are today. Yeah. Um, that's good. That's good. Um, so you guys, and you talked about covenant too. I think that's so mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. Talk just for a moment about that because I, I realize it's a little bit on the deeper side, yeah. but that's so foundational. Yes. Uh, and we've kind of lost even that, obviously the terminology, but even the understanding of that. Talk about covenant for a second. Yeah. Yeah. So covenant, uh, when you look at it in the Bible, um, man, there's so many ways you can, you can really go about it. But uh, we, we go back to the covenant that God made with Abram mm -hmm. before he was even Abraham. Yeah. Before God changed the whole deal. Right. Yeah. And so there was a ritual that God did with Abraham in Genesis 15, I believe. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it was, you know, I'm in real estate. That's what the line of work I do today. And, you know, there's contracts when you purchase homes or land, that kind of thing. Well, this ritual that, Ab that God had with Abraham was one of land treaties. Mm -hmm. This is how they would make a pact that they were going to convey land to mm -hmm. one party to another. And uh, a long story short on this whole deal, um, back then, all you had was your word. Yeah. There were no lawyers in courtrooms that were going to battle this out Yeah. if you didn't keep up to your end of the deal. Yeah. What was, it was life and death. Wow. And so um, God had Abraham sacrifice these animals, animal sacrifices. Mm -hmm. He would lay the dead carcasses on either side of this aisle, and then they would both walk through to signify saying really that if I don't keep up to my end of the deal, let it be done to me as it's been done to these. Yeah. So when God goes to uh, write this covenant with Abram, with Abram, yeah. he walks through. When it comes to Abram's turn to walk through, he doesn't allow Abram to do it. Mm. He walks through on Abram's side. That's good, yeah. So what you see in this covenant is God saying, I'm going to keep up to my end of the deal. If not, let it be done to me. It's been done to these. Yeah. But he says, but Abraham, even if you don't keep up to your end of the deal, yeah. let it be done to me. What's yeah. been done to these. Yeah. And that is a picture of Jesus Christ on the cross wow. all those years later. Yeah. But that's covenant. It's a decision. Yeah. It is a pre-decided yeah. um, decision in my heart that today I wake up and I choose to love you. Yeah. When Jesus went to the cross, he died. And with no guarantee that any of us would ever accept his salvation. Yeah. But he pre-decided in his mind that there is an opportunity and I'm going all in on the opportunity. It's good. And that's what covenant is. Yeah. I have decided, therefore I do. Yeah. I am because of my decision. Yeah. It's hard because we talk about that emotional entangling mm -hmm. of emotions. emotions. I mean, how many times just being <clears throat> practical, we wake up and we don't like our spouse and we don't feel like being nice it. yeah and uh, I we love don't, you, baby. I don't yeah. like you all the time yeah because it's, it's the very truth true. of the very reality true. of you know there's some days you're lovey-dovey there's other days that it's really hard to get yeah. along yeah but um it's in the being hard to get along where the enemy slips in yes. and he's real subtle about yeah. the lies but he'll feed them to you just like he did eve in the garden yeah 
And then that's when those sw- uh, ideas of divorce swirl or mm. separation, like maybe we're just not meant to be. I made the wrong decision. I married the wrong we person. The wrong we person. hear that all the time. That's one um, of our lies was, mm-hmm. oh, I mm-hmm. must have married the wrong person. Yeah, we must have got this it wrong. working out. Yeah. 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 And, but it's not true. Mm. And the so days uh, like that, that you have to rely on the decision that you made. That covenant. That for better, for worse, for richer, for poor. Yeah. In goodness and in health. Yeah. As long as we both shall live. And that yeah. was something for us that we really did. It was in the struggle. Mm-hmm. Um, what we just talked about, part of our story, what led us to this. That's really where that covenant, like it clicked mm-hmm. yeah. for us. Um, we say it at our at our wedding. All of us have, right? Yeah. We say the for better, for worse, and sickness and health, all the things. Mm-hmm. Um, but it doesn't make it doesn't snap then because you know it doesn't that doesn't click then because you're not upset, you know, yeah. like you're, you're not yeah. fighting. Like yeah. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. Rainbows, and candy, we're gonna be sunshine. in love forever, you know. And <laughs> Um, and, you know, people say that, yeah, you know, it's just the honeymoon phase, like it'll pass and stuff, mm. but you don't really understand what that means until you're there. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. This is where, this is where covenant comes into play. Yeah. This is when Justin has put his socks in a pile in the corner <laughs> instead of in the hamper yep. that I get to say, no, yep. that's petty. And I love this man. <laughs> and this is the covenant I made with him. And those are, you know, small <laughs> things, but the, even the big things, even yeah. the struggles struggles that we had of mm-hmm. genuinely looking at each other. Are we in this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah baby, we are. Yeah. And so that At the altar covenant is made. Yes. Yeah. On your worst day, covenant is kept. Boom. Man. Wow. Okay. Somebody Mike drop. Somebody baby. hashtag that. That's good. That's good. <laughs> That's exactly what that is. You know, and, and and let's get a cultural context here. Selfishness and the remember the movie The Pursuit of Happiness? Yeah. That movie was not the pursuit of happiness, mm. by the way. Yeah. The saddest movie ever. <laughs> I don't even find it even at the end of it. Yeah. But, but man, we pursue happiness at the expense of relationships. Mm. That's exactly and, right. And you think about Jesus when he's, you know, they said, Can you divorce, you know, for any reason? Can a man divorce? And that's the culture we live in, guys. Yes. And so when you talk covenant, man, that really challenges, whoa, wait a minute. Yep. But maybe in that, the agape love that was displayed in a covenant with us. Yeah. Right. We start discovering that love amongst each other. Yes, that's mm-hmm. right. And now, you know, we I was telling you guys, my wife and I were doing a key and a Q and A at a marriage rally here a few months ago. And one of the questions was, How do you keep that honeymoon? How do you keep that? Yeah. And our response is quick as you don't. Uh, and you won't, uh, but but you get something better. Yes. Right. Because what's better than that is she's loved me when she had no reason to love me <laughs> and vice versa. I'll just say it that way. Cause she's not here. I don't get in trouble, but uh, <laughs> they said that wrong, but, but no, we know that committed love, that covenant love, mm-hmm. man, that's guys. If you're struggling in your marriage tonight, you're like, man, what are we missing? Let me just help you a little bit. If you don't have that, man, that's a foundation. Yes. That's not an optional foundation. That's not, you can do No, you can't, you no. can't do without that. And you need, Jesus said what God has joined together in this Let covenant. No man. See there. Yeah. yeah. Including yourself. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, you <laughs> may be the that. man. That's yeah. good. I yeah. never thought of that. That's good. That is good. Well, and I'll and I'll interject real quick on this, just this one thing. But what, what I love about covenant is that it it helps to reestablish time. That's good. Because uh when we're arguing and we're not on our best days, guys, it's a season mm-hmm. um that you're not you're misfiring. But <laughs> It'll it'll turn again, but what that does is it helps you to say, you know what, we may not get it today, but tomorrow's a new day. Yeah. And that's what covenant does. That's good. It helps us to reestablish the work of time. Yeah, we've got years, baby. We're gonna figure this out. <laughs> we don't gotta figure it out that's tonight. Good. That's tonight good. we can love each other. Tomorrow we'll chip away at it again. Yeah, because there's yeah. And I want to segue into this because you guys have talked about this. You hear this so much. And we all know social media, by the way, if you're watching us via social media, thank you. There's some real (laughs) benefits to all these media platforms that are out there. But let's talk about the reality again of seeing this Instagram marriage or Facebook marriage or whatever. And we do. We feel like, man, we're so does. Don't you think the enemy is just enhancing that? uh, You don't feel satisfied in your marriage. I mean, you guys think that's pretty prevalent. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you want to, you want to no, you go it. ahead. Yeah. No, just, I mean, you know, I've said this before. It's like, we are the most connected society, yeah. but we are so disconnected yeah. in real life. Um, yeah. We see, we see all of the things on Instagram, Facebook, all of the, you know, platforms, and we're just scrolling past these 
fake. It's just yeah. so fake. <laughs> and it's, but it's all comparison. It's yeah. all comparison. That's all it is. And we were talking about this recently, but it was like one of the 10 commandments is do not covet. Yeah. And that's what like comparison is. And that's I'm like, good. he thought that we, it's one of the things that we struggle with the most in this society today's day and age. And it's one of the 10 commandments. Like that's how important like, yeah. it is to him that he <laughs> yeah. said, don't do this. Like, these are the 10 things yeah. I'm telling you. And, um, and we just spend all of our time coveting what someone else has, the comparing of what someone mm. else has. And half of the time it's fake. Yeah, that's It's good. not even <laughs> real. It's not, it's not genuine. And, yeah. you know, even just that, you know, the honeymoon phase, the lovey dovey, like, Yes, like absolutely we have that and there's that that passion there absolutely. Mm-hmm. But man, that yeah. real the intimacy. Yeah. The intimacy that can only be created through yeah. the time and the words that I've put in with this man right here. Yeah. That's worth fighting for. That's the covenant. That's what I keep going back to and and what you should go back to. Yeah. Um as, you know, we're faced with these things of just being hit over and over and over again. Um, honestly, I just believe the enemy uses it yeah. to really just start that wildfire in our brains, you know? And that was, you know, for yeah. me and just being very transparent, like that was one of my, and, and is, you know, one of my like escapism of like mm-hmm. that, um, you know, fantasy life of because yeah. Yeah. of what Instagram and Facebook and these social media platforms can do. I'm at home in my sweats, scrubbing <laughs> the floor or changing the baby yeah. for the 10th time or someone is sick or, you know, whatever. Yeah. And, and I have a moment to sit down and I see, you know, so-and-so living her best life and yeah. she's on the beach with her kids and, yeah. you know, just, oh man, what that might be like if I just, you know, could have, you know, just gotten married to some other dude or whatever and take, you know, gone to California and had my beach house and just all of the things. Yeah. Um, just how easy, how easy it is. And it's just so real. Like Mm -hmm. we can't just, you know, like all of us have, I I believe been there at one time or another, just scrolling mindlessly. Yeah. And it's just such a sneaky way the enemy comes in to be like, Mm -hmm. Hey, here's another reason that, you know, this isn't worth it. And it breeds discontent. Well, yeah, yes, because our society is yeah. driven by really two main main things here. It's it's instant gratification mm. and uh, imagery. Oh, yeah. So I see in an image what I want. Yeah. And if I can't get that in a certain amount of time, yeah. then I need to cut my losses and start over again. Mm. The sad thing is, is this is applied in relationships. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So... Just because we were just newly married, right, for example, yeah. and I have an image for what marriage should be. We're not there. I put it on a time frame. Yeah. If it doesn't work by X time, <laughs> I need to cut my losses and start over. Wow. Wow. It's a lie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lie. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. you know, the reality is, and you said it's fake, and, and this is so true, oftentimes, Again, people are, they, they've kind of created this thing where they're working so hard to keep this image up. And yes. we've all been guilty of that, yes. right? Um, they can't even live it themselves. It's not right. even real to them, no. right? Um, and then when you get real, like you guys have gotten, and that's where everybody is. And then we all can come to that and say, you know what? That's what we're all really dealing with. That's what we're yeah. all really going through. Yeah. And But see, Satan hates that. Because mm-hmm. what happens when that happens, man? Yeah. Then he can move and bring healing. Yeah. Right. But he wants us all chasing something that's not even real. Right. 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 Satan wants you to be isolated. And that's one and one of the biggest lies I feel even social media, another thing, you know, besides that comparison and Mm -hmm. constantly coveting after something you don't have, is that idea that you are alone. Yeah. You are the only one (laughs) dealing (laughs) with this right now. You are the only one having marriage problems. You are the only one having problem with your kids. You're the only one financially struggling right now. Yeah. And it is such a lie that we do let social media sometimes influence that because we get lost in this, you know, the, 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 the scroll, the zombie scrolling, you yeah. know, just something else I don't have, something else I don't have, something else I don't have. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Now, let me ask you this. People <clears throat> tuning in, we are better together. and They're listening to y'all's podcast. Yeah. What are y'all hoping that they're going to get uh, out of this podcast? What, what's some things that you're thinking, man, when these couples tune in, I really hope that they get... What's, what's some words you've used to describe that? 
Uh, I would, um, I would really, my number one is hope. That's good. Uh, because marriage can sometimes feel like it is straight rocket science. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't get it because I don't get the one in front of me, Yeah, yeah. you know? And, uh, but the thing is, is you may think that you're too far gone, but truthfully you may be right where you need to be. That's good. And, uh, there is a, uh, there is, it's a lifelong process. I mean, this re- a relationship, any relationship is ne- never a, uh, it's never a, you know, a short dash or what is it like a 50 meter, you know, where you're yeah. going to get there and you're going to get done. This is all marathon living yeah. and, uh, you're learning things and it's who you're running your race with, um, you know, who you're side by side with. Um, so what I would, what I would hope that our, uh, podcast imparts, primarily number one is hope yeah. hope that it's okay if today is not a good day tomorrow's a new one it's good if today you feel like i'm i am i am just uh how do you say it i, I am i am expensed out i have no energy to give to this yeah. tomorrow's a new day yeah tomorrow's a day we can make the decision all over again and really so that way other folks know too that man again you're just you may not be as far off as you think you are yeah what yeah. you consider like this is really bad could be this is a normal part of getting to know each other. Yeah. Sometimes I think that's what the enemy comes in and does yes. is he uh, he exaggerates everything we go through. Yeah. Uh, thinking that this is the end. Yeah. When really, man, this is the beginning. Yeah. This is the beginning. It's good. Uh, when Alejandro and I went through our our uh, our crisis point there, it was the beginning. It was. It marked the beginning of. The marriage we wanted and that we build every day yeah. to have and to and to you know to live and so yeah that's good yeah mm-hmm. i think hope and, and just the practical tools like mm. the you know the practicality of this is how maybe you could do like baby step number one yeah you know this isn't like part of our podcast and something we love to do like it's not just this like lecture or teaching or you know here's just this like you know awesome book for you to read and spend, you know, like the next few months trying to figure it out on your own. But like, here are just some things that we dealt with, like, yeah. and are dealing with because it's very real and we don't stop working yeah. on our marriage. Yeah. Here are some things that we we found helpful. Here are some things that we felt Holy Spirit has, you know, help given us and we want to impart them. And so just practical tools, practical ways, like what's one thing you can do today to move your marriage in the right direction. Yeah. So yeah, just very practical, real, relatable, you know, all the, yeah. And I think that's so good because practical is really powerful. And that's something that I think so many are gravitating to that because again, the information, I mean, it's helpful, Yeah. but man, when I'm in the trenches and you've had that bad day and the kids are screaming, just give me something that's very, applicable, practical to where we're at right now. Yeah. Uh, because nobody really lives in that world. You read a book, right. but you don't live in that. We, yeah. We've we counseled couples and parenting and, and get them some really good books on parenting. And and you have to realize that's kind of a template to work with, yeah. but you'll have some that's like, well, page five said this. I'm like, okay, wait, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's not that exact. <laughs> yeah. and, and marriage is not that exact, right? right? right. Um, so in those real moments, yes. you need just some real tools to yes. work with. So yeah, that's absolutely right. Let me ask you guys this because we got a little bit of time before we close out. So I, before the show started, I, I went ahead and gave them the word. Uh, but I want to talk about, and the, you could even put another word with this would be romance, but passion. Um, I feel like we're a society that is, we don't live in a realm of passion as much. I talked about an existing marriage. You know, it's a business deal. You see couples that are married. Right. There's no passion. They don't hold hands. We've been out today with these two guys and believe me, they're, it's like we're in public, please just, <laughs> yeah. but, uh, very in love. But, but, but I want to retract what I said. You, you don't keep that honeymoon, but you do work yeah. to have it on a different level in your yes. marriage built on that foundation of covenant. Then it's like, man, we all the time it's are just, 2.0. I love you, sweetie you and go. all. Yeah, yeah exactly. And yeah. so, Let's talk about, for a moment, talk about passion and romance. How important is that in your marriage and how do you get it? Yeah, that's really good. You know, we, uh, we, this recent podcast episode we did, we were, we're outlining, uh, you know, Jimmy Evans calls it the four laws of love, you know, mm-hmm. that we found in Genesis two yeah. and, uh, you know, talking about, you know, the scripture of, uh, 
for this reason, a man leaves his mother and father and is joined to his wife, you know? Mm -hmm. So we kind of hit the first two topics there, but one of those is pursuit. And uh, that's one thing that I am guilty of sometimes. And I have to check myself is this woman is still worthy of my pursuit. That's good. And I think sometimes, you know, us as men struggle with that a little bit because we are, we're conquerors. (laughs) That's, that's in our innate being. Yeah. But once we conquer something, we move forward, right? Yeah. Um, but our ladies' hearts are are very different <laughs> than a conquest of land. Uh yeah. there's a it's not a conquest, it's a championing. Mm. There's a difference. It's good. Um, when you champion something, you are an advocate of it. Yeah. You are a you are submersed in it. You're you are um an expert in that. Yeah. And so uh, you know, our, our wives' hearts aren't lands to be for conquest, but hearts for championing. That's good. Um, I've heard it said before, like, you know, I think Jimmy says it like this too, but um, I, I need a PhD in Alejandro Garcia, right? <laughs> but that's what that is. It's, what, it's a constant pursuit. It yeah. doesn't end because, and though some of you may think, well, Justin, that sounds really exhausting. Um, but <laughs> let me, let me, let me just Thank present you. a little something else to you here. Um, you know, there's this idea that some people are just unmotivated. Well, I challenge that thinking because everybody's motivated, That's but good. they're motivated to different things. Mm, so good. if you're unmotivated to pursue your wife, uh, practically think, where is my motivation lie? Yeah. And where do I need to do some reprioritizing? Yeah. Because here's the thing. If you don't champion your wife's heart, mm. if you're not pursuing your spouse in that uh, in that way, then things get old, right? Yeah. yeah. This is getting boring. Yeah. I have no desire anymore to do this. No passion. My passion's gone. <laughs> and I adapt my passion to something else. Yeah. But the thing is, uh, we, our passion, shouldn't it be directed to the most important things in our life first? Yeah. Right. We talked about that because, you know, the first whole law of that is prioritization. Priority, yeah. Yeah. And the question I, I pose there is, uh, where uh, what are you giving your wife? Are you giving the your wife the best of your day or the leftovers of your day? Mm. Wow. The best of your mind and attention or what's left at the yeah. end of the day? And that's not to condemn, but it's to be relatable, right? I think we've all been there. <laughs> yeah. But this is a great time to help redo that because passion is necessary. Mm-hmm. Um, what what you got to realize is that when you're passionate about an individual, like when you're dating, mm-hmm. you're really passionate about each other. Yeah. But what are you doing? You're always spending time with one another. <laughs> it's always words, talking baby. like this like this generation. Texting, yeah. snapping, right? Snapchatting, <laughs> right? Or whatever. You know what I mean? We don't You're, endorse Snapchat right. around here. Yeah. But, but yeah. There, there's there's that going on where <laughs> all that's on your mind and all that you're passionate for is your significant other, yeah. right? Yeah. And there's things that we have to do to keep that up. And yeah. so uh but it takes that that pursuing. There's a yeah, constant and on pursuit. the and on the flip side of that, for a wife, mm-hmm. like again, is Justin getting the leftovers because I'm covered in snot and <laughs> you know, I mean, everything from the day. Is, is he getting leftovers, or is he getting mm-hmm. my 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 you know first and my best? And yeah. you know that for a wife to a husband, you know, you that is that pursuit that um you know championing the little text during the day. Hey babe, you know, I love you. You're the world to me. Like all the things that he's very good about it, by the way. Yeah. Um, but you know, for me, it's honoring him. Oh my gosh. Mm. Like just baby, you, you're the man. Like, (laughs) and I tell him all the time, but I mean, just that place of honor, like he sits at our table and this is a, um, this is not a, um, machismo thing. Um, we, you know, in our culture, the Mexican culture, I've learned Hispanic about this, culture. By the way. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm on board. There is a, uh, <laughs> it, it's been very abused, yes. sadly. You yes. know, there's lots of, of machismo that runs very, very deep mm-hmm. where the husband demands things of the wife. And I've seen it abused. Um, mm. But I've also seen the other side of that. My parents were so, so good mm. at my dad really um, pursuing my mom, loving her well, That's and my good. mom giving my dad that place of honor and respect. And so I grew up in a home. Thank thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mom and dad <laughs> for, um, you know, exhibiting that for me, but just that place of um, honoring the man of the house because he, he loves us so well. And yeah. 
it was no different when I married this man. The way that he loves me, the way that he pursues me, he comes home, he sits at the table, and I serve him. He mm -hmm. does not get up. And that is not from a place, but because he has demanded that of me, he has never once ever, ever said, give me my food. Where's my drink? Where's never. It is because I give him that place of honor. Right. And, um, and too, in that, like that intimacy is built that way. Mm -hmm. You know, that we're talking about passion. That's part of that intimacy that starts outside the bedroom, yeah. girls and boys. <laughs> like yeah. it's that time and words, the first mm. and the best. That's so good. Are we talking throughout the day? Are we connecting throughout the day? Even if it's just a quick text, even if it's a, you know, a sexy text. Hello. <laughs> right. I mean, those are the things that, that get that. It keeps that passion rolling. You know, Good. I might be feeding a baby or I might be, you know, you know, changing a poopy diaper, yeah. but I'm thinking about my husband. I'm that passion. I'm keeping that passion alive in my heart. Um, and so then that plays out later that night. Kids are in bed. Hey, baby, <laughs> let's have some fun. Because yeah. we've kept that, that fire has kept, you know, we've kept it burning. That's um, so you know, the date nights, the intentionality, mm. something that Justin and I had to learn um, was, you know, everything's pulling at us. Kids, you know, jobs, you know, at the time, church, everything. Um, mm. You know, we had to have that time where we said, no, this is our time together to connect. We get to talk. We get to look at each other in the face, <laughs> talk about whatever, you know, whatever's on our hearts and just listen to each other, be with each other. We know what do we want to do with our time, love? We can do whatever. Yeah. Um, but that was priority. And it, gen I mean, it changed changed the way that we um related to that and that passion and that romance absolutely yeah you guys said something in one of your podcasts and you said you're not going to wake <clears throat> up one day and just have your dream marriage mm -hmm. and there's a four-letter word we all know it's work um mm -hmm. but just to hear you guys talk and i love again this is this relatable dynamic you guys have just that practical element of doing those things that you did when you first came together and that reminds me of a scripture what did Jesus say? He said, you've left, left your first love. Mm -hmm. And so repent. And that means change your mind. Let's, yeah. let's change directions. Let's go back. And then let's do the things you did at first. And guys, that element, what these guys are sharing here tonight, that's what it really is. Yeah. We can go back. I can still take my wife. Now, there's no longer Harrigans. If you remember Harrigans, that was the hot <laughs> date night back in my day. <laughs> Steak and L is gone. <laughs> Uh, but whatever it is, cask and cork, got macaroni and Joe's, whatever is really cool. Yeah. Uh, hey, and maybe you're on a budget, man. I don't care if it's Whataburger. That's right. But you could. Come on. We, we got that too. We got yeah. that too. Or maybe Torchy's Tacos right in the middle. Yeah. Somewhere. But, you know, man, it's like, let's be, there it is. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that time together because it's time. That's right. And you think about it when you first came together, you didn't care. That's I right. just want to be with that person, that's right. man. Mm -hmm. And so that's so necessary guys yeah. that's so good that y'all are sharing that um you know as we're kind of closing out here tonight and you know maybe you're listening and you're hearing all this and you're like man okay i've had my toe stepped on a little bit here <laughs> uh but in a good way you realize that we all have those same toes stepped on just by truth and that's that's a good thing uh because the truth will what set you, set you free. free yeah so some of you tonight you're in a marriage and you're like man we, we desire more, but we're not there. Um, what do you guys want to say as we're closing out to those couples? Maybe they've recently talked divorce and they feel like their marriage is dead. What do you want to say to them? And if you would, just uh, let's pray for them. Yeah. yeah. Close out that way. Absolutely. Well, if you find yourself in a position like that, um, there's one really reality that you have to settle with. And we talked about this in one of our podcast episodes, the best thing you can do for your marriage. But the best thing you can do truthfully for your marriage is work on you. That's good. Because that's the only control you have. Mm -hmm. You can't control what your spouse does. Um, you can't drag your spouse to church or to a marriage conference thinking that if they get this, this is all going to be well. You have to be willing and pre-deciding in your heart that I'm going to do what's best for my marriage. And that's by me being the best me that I can be. Because when I come to the table and I know who I am and who God's called me to be, I can now come to the table and look at my struggling wife in our struggling marriage. And the thought isn't how she hates me or she's offending me, but the thought is, man, what is she going through mm. that she is th being this way? What is my husband going through that he says these things to me? 
really what happens is now you seek to understand your spouse first before attempting to be understood. And so uh, if you find yourself in that position, I know it's probably not the news you want to hear, but I'm telling you this is what you need to hear in love is that it starts with you. Because here's what God honors. God doesn't honor efficiency or effectiveness or these things. He honors faith. Mm. That's what the word says. And so in your faith in him and allowing him in to change and to remodel what he ha- what you have here into what he intends for you to be, it's going to have implications in your marriage that you don't even see. Mm. And number two, I didn't even say one. But number two, <laughs> it's prayer. Mm. And, and I, well, I've said this before plenty of times, but it almost seems like prayers are last resort. <laughs> but prayer should be the first thing we run to. Because if we, gra- if we could grasp the idea of our loving father and how much he cares for us, mm. we would run to our daddy's arms first. <clears throat> because in him is peace. In him is provision for our lack. Mm. In him is uh, a healing mm. for the wounds that we are dealing with. Because just as you are wounded, your spouse is wounded as well. Yes. Yeah. But you, you can start the healing in your home. Yeah. Going back to that covenant, just, you know, like you said, I pre-decided. So mm-hmm. I pre-decided I don't feel like it today, but this is what you're going to do. And, and the other thing is you're not alone. Mm. That would be the other thing I'd want to say is you are not alone reach out. It, it's, mm-hmm. that was one of our struggles is I felt, I feel like maybe we were um, in our struggle for a little too long mm-hmm. because our pride got in the way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We didn't want to admit that we had problems. We were the only ones that were struggling with this <laughs> is what the enemy had convinced us yeah. of. Mm-hmm. So that is my, um, you know, mm-hmm. ditto to everything he said. This man is so wise and man, I could listen to him talk all day, but um, those things Absolutely. And you are not alone. Mm. You are not alone. Reach out, get help, talk to someone who loves Jesus, Mm -hmm. who's going to lead you down Mm -hmm. a biblical, um, a biblical way into your healing Mm -hmm. um, and help you get, get the resources and the tools that you need. Again, the practicality Mm -hmm. to take that step in the right direction for your marriage. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Well, we want to pray for you. And Justin, you want to just pray for those couples that are Maybe you're there tonight. If if you are uh, with your spouse right now, why don't you just grab their hand, put your arm around them, and I want you just to receive this prayer and let God bring some of these things that Justin and Alejandro have mentioned here tonight uh, to bring healing in your heart. Yeah. So, Father, we thank you, uh, number one, uh, for the establishment of marriage. Mm-hmm. Uh, because uh, on the foundation of marriage that is laid, uh, it, 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 it provides uh, the opportunity uh, to build a better world. Yes. Um, uh, you, you pre-decided that society would be built upon this unit. Mm-hmm. And so, Father, I pray for every marriage mm. that is uh, represented in mm-hmm. our meeting here, um, that from folks that are watching, uh, maybe it's married couples together or mm-hmm. just a spouse. Mm-hmm. Uh, Father, I just pray your Holy Spirit yes. would enter into that room, enter into their relationship and be the center. Mm-hmm. Father, because when we put mm-hmm. you at the center, all things come into order. Mm-hmm. And that's what needs to happen first and foremost. And I also pray, Lord, for the spouses who are struggling. Mm-hmm. Maybe they their spouse is out on their marriage, but they mm-hmm. are not giving up. Father, I pray, Lord, for your wisdom and your faith to overwhelm them, Father, that they would begin to just hand it over to you, into your hands. Yes. Lord, that they they are not responsible Mm -hmm. for the saving of their marriage, but they are Mm -hmm. responsible for the changing of themselves. That's good. Mm -hmm. And Lord, I pray, God, that again, every spouse who is struggling, Lord, as they open their heart to you and allow you to come in, God, that you would come into these rooms, these closets where we've stuffed some things away, Mm -hmm. Lord, and not reorganize the closet, but repurpose the room. Mm -hmm. Father, I pray that maybe these closets that have skeletons in them wouldn't be closets of pain, God, but would would become rooms of prayer. Mm -hmm. 
Father, where there were places of death, God, now they are places of intimacy yes. and peace mm-hmm. where they meet with you, Holy Spirit, yes. and where things are changed from the inside out. Mm-hmm. So again, Father, we lift up every single marriage to you. Father, thank you for giving us the heart and the wisdom through your word mm-hmm. to take a stand for marriage. Father, because uh, marriage is being attacked and deconstructed mm-hmm. in our society. And Lord, not only do we pray for marriages to be restored, God, but Lord, for other marriage leaders to be established, yes. God, yes. in every corner, in all four corners of the earth, God, yeah. that marriages, uh, couples would begin to rise up and lead within their realm of influence to change marriage for the better. Father, this is now our time to take back yes. territory That's that right. has been taken mm-hmm. uh, right. uh, from the enemy, yeah. uh, that the enemy has come in uh, to uh, to uh, to make us more confused. Mm-hmm. There is so much confusion, so much haziness, Father, uh, uh, in our world today. But Lord, we look to you, to our guide for mm-hmm. peace and clarity. And Father, I pray, God, that we begin to see a revival of mm-hmm. marriage, God, yes, in the Lord. world yeah. today. Yes, Lord. And Lord, I pray that there are those who are watching this, God, mm-hmm. that they would answer the call to be a part of that revival and to call others into the game, mm-hmm. into living the way mm-hmm. you have designed us to live. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 That's amen. so powerful. You know, guys, remember, there's hope. Mm-hmm. You're not alone. Work on Sorry. yourself. Remember that covenant. So if you guys are looking for depth in an atmosphere that's very real and fun, check these guys out. Fred, if we can get that up there again, we can. But uh, getting in touch with you guys, following your podcast, yeah. it's on, uh, I think you guys are also on Facebook. Yeah, uh, we have a Facebook page, and we kind of do things in tandem with our podcast. Yeah. Uh, if you go to yeah, Facebook nice. and just type in We Are Better Together, you'll find our page. Our podcast can be found on Apple, Spotify, uh, Google, Amazon, you know, uh, wherever you consume your uh, your uh, podcast material. And so uh, we'd love for you to join us and join in on that conversation. Alejandra and I call it a conversation because that's what we want it to be. Um, you know, there's lots of great teaching out there and other things you can do. We do a little bit of that. But yeah. what we want to do is really to challenge uh, to challenge you and, and to t- help you to take your marriage to that next level. Yeah. And so uh, join in on the conversation. Yes, it's not always serious. We have fun. Oh, uh, my gosh. As you so can tell, fun. this lady over here is so much fun. She keeps me <laughs> honest. So, uh, oh, these guys. Yeah, we have and, a great time. Yeah, And that's it. And that, I love the conversation because that's you're just going to feel like you, I listen to their podcasts. And I listen to a lot of podcasts throughout the day. It is literally like you're just sitting down with another couple and they're just sharing their story. Yeah. And they're sharing truth from God's word. They're sharing, you know, things that they've struggled with. Again, really encourage you. Check it out, guys. Thanks for being here. Hopefully, thanks we'll do for this having again. us on. We thank really you. appreciate the yeah. invitation. Well, and to Fred, thank you, sir, for allowing yes. us to thank you to be on your platform. So honored. So, yeah, well, we're it's a blessing honored. to have you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, next week, tune in again to the Fred Hughes Show, and we'll look forward to seeing you then. Goodbye. If you enjoyed the show today, be sure and get the download and the uh, show notes that we have available for you. If you agree that this is place to be, invite your friends. Use those little buttons to uh, connect us to your Facebook friends and others. And if you have not subscribed, do it today. Check out our free downloads. This is the Fred Hughes Show signing off.